Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to connect your Flutter application to an AWS DynamoDB database, storing your mobile data into the cloud. The connection runs via serverless Lambda functions via the API gateway into the DynamoDB database. In the example I will use, the database stores location that will be shown as markers on your map. By clicking a floating action button, I can retrieve the latest GPS coordinates and add them as a new location to the database. In my previous videos, I have already built a little application that shows markers on a map and retrieves the positions from the cloud. So in this video, I will build a basic backend to store position data. So what do I need to make this happen? This is the current setup. I have my Flutter app that takes the GPS position and shows the map around my current location. It also downloads a list of locations from a static S3 bucket in the Amazon cloud and adds them as markers on top of my map. I want to make this dynamic, so I can take the position I'm currently at from the GPS co coordinates, save it to the cloud, and show it as a marker on my map. So for this, I will need a new database in the cloud. I use DynamoDB for this on AWS and create a new table where for each user the location list can be stored. I will also need two Lambda functions, one to retrieve all locations for a user and want to add a new location to that list. I will then go to the API gateway and make these two Lambda functions accessible via HTTP. Then I can go back to my Flutter app and change the URL from the JSON file in the S3 bucket and switch it to the API gateway. Once my Flutter application can access the data from the DynamoDB to read the locations, I can add the functionality to add a new location every time the floating action button is pressed. So the first thing I need to do is create the table in DynamoDB. Now I'm logged into my AWS management console and I go straight to DynamoDB and I create a new table, give it the name locations and I add a partition and key user ID type string. I will use that later so I can segregate the locations from one user from the, uh, the others. I don't need a sort key, I leave the default settings. That's everything I need. It's creating the new table. And here it is. So I get into that table. I see it's empty, has no items. So what I will do now is I create a first item with user ID one and I add the file that I have already and I create this item and here it is. So I can have a look at this. Now I have user ID one. It has exactly the same positions as it is in the static file. Now that I have created the table in DynamoDB, I can create the Lambda function to read the data from the table. Now I go to Lambda to create the function to retrieve the data from the table. So here, AWS Lambda, I create a new function. I author from scratch and I call it get locations. I use Node.js on an ARM processor and I use an existing role for the execution access rights. I already created a role, Lambda DynamoDB role, which I can reuse here and I create the function. And now I'm here with a very simple dummy code that just creates a, a replies with a hello from Lambda. So I will replace this code with my script that I have already prepared. So here I basically open a connection to DynamoDB and with const, I prepare the uh, parameters for my database access. I use the table locations that I just created 
user ID will be the key condition expression. So I relate to one specific document with that specific user ID. And expression attribute values here, I pull in the, uh, the parameter that I get from the event, which calls the Lambda function with a user ID and I map it to the user ID in the table. So I specify which document I'm getting. And then here I'm calling the query uh, function of the document client with these parameters, wait for the result. And if things go right, then I return the items object of the response. If not, I return an error message. So let me deploy this function. And to test it, I need to configure a test event. So I test with user ID one. And I get exactly the data I just pasted in the, in the database table. Now, if I use a different user ID, let me configure an, a second So if I use user ID two, I get an empty response. Now that I've created the Lambda function to read the data from the DynamoDB, I can expose that Lambda function via the API. I go to the API gateway and create a new API. I use REST API and give it a simple name, locations, Endpoint, I leave regional and the rest is okay. So the structure here is by resources and methods. So first I need to create a resource. So I call it log list. I use course. And on the log list, I create a method, get. It's a Lambda function. I do not use proxy integration. And here I specify which functions to integrate. I authorize it. So now I need to map the user ID to transfer it. I do not use proxy integration. All this is okay. What I need to do is I need a mapping template. And here I need to map the user ID. So I create a JSON with user ID and here I paste in the user ID that is handed over in the get request. So I've saved this. I do not do any authentication or validation of the request for now. Just do the mapping of the user ID, hand it over to, to get locations and the rest is passed through. So now I can test this. And here I get the positions for user ID one and null for user ID two. All right, so next is I can deploy this. Straight to production. And when I open this link in a new tab, I get a exception.
but when I add the user ID, I get exactly the positions. Now that I have created the API, I can go back to my Flutter app and change it to access instead of the JSON file from the static S3 bucket to access this API. So here I am in my VS code and I have created an, a new get positions function. I have renamed the old one to get static positions and made a copy get positions. Uh, what I changed is I switched to the new server from S3 to the API gateway and of course the resource name. What I also had to change is uh, I added the parameter for user ID, can be handed over as a parameter part of the string like in a browser, but I added here on a temporary basis uh, as a parameter for the request. The other thing I had to change was under positions, I had to do a minor tweak to pass only the positions field because I also get the user ID as part of the response. So let's run this. So now I get my markers all the way from the DynamoDB database in the AWS cloud. Now that reading the data from the DynamoDB works end to end, I will add the Lambda function to add an additional entry to the database. So back in Lambda, I create a new function. And again, I author from scratch. With the same settings as previously. And again, I replace the default I'm giving. As you can see, the Lambda function has basically the same structure. It is mostly wrapped around uh, database requests using the document client, but the request itself is a bit more complicated. Structure is always the same, preparing uh, parameters and then executing a request. So in this case, it will be a put request, trying to add a new um, entry, assuming the item is not in the database. So this will be a conditional request. If there is already an item in the database, then I will get an error and continue just appending a position to the list. So in most cases, it will be the second flow, this flow, uh, where I again create parameters for the request, with the user ID taking it from the request, and I have an update uh, expression where I append to a list and I specify the positions as the list to append to and new position as the entry to append. And that's basically how it works. And if the entry is not existing in the database, it will just create one and stop there. Now that I've created the Lambda function to add an entry to the database, I will go back to the API gateway to add the API to access this function. In the API gateway, I have my resource log list on which I have created an additional uh, method for the put request. I have mapped it to my add location lambda function. In the mapping template, I map in a static user ID 3, which I will change later on. And new pos is taken from the body of my request. So that I need to deploy again. And with that, it is available for my Flutter application to call. Now that the API gateway can also add a location to the table, I need to go back to my Flutter application and add that functionality to take the current GPS location and add it as a new location into the database. I have created another function to put position, writing a position to the cloud. So it takes a new position marker, uh, converts it to a JSON and hands it over to HTTP put 
which I created as a clone of HTTP GET with an additional parameter for payload. I specify in the header the content type for application JSON and add the payload in the body. And the same is transferred then to a server and path as before. In the postmarker class, I created a new method, update AWS, which basically creates an HTTP loader and puts itself into the cloud. In the main function of my program, I modified the update position, which so far only updated the map when you click the button. Uh, now it creates a new position marker with the current position that we retrieved in determined position and writes this position into the cloud. It also updates the map and creates an additional position, additional marker on, on the map. So let's give it a try. So here I have my Google map and when I press the button, it will get the position and create a marker, write it to the database. And as you see here on the previous markers, uh, these are the ones as I cruise along the interstate which is as the location here is set, freeway drive. So it basically every minute or so, it will jump to a new position along the freeway. And as you can see, the previous positions have been retrieved from the database. Now that I have the reading and writing to my DynamoDB table implemented via Lambda functions and the API gateway into the Flutter application, I can in my next video add the security for it so that user A sees his data, user B sees his data, and you need to log on to the application, otherwise you don't have access to it. Please subscribe to see how to protect the API using Cognito.